Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ray. I'm the founder of Step Conference based in Dubai. Uh, I must say it's been an amazing time in Istanbul. I've been having like 10 meals every day. Uh, the city is just awesome. And uh, in today's panel, uh, we're going to have the Accelerator's Dilemma and I have three guys who are running accelerators in different parts of the world. Please help me welcome them by a big round of applause. Uh, I would like just to, to get a quick round of introductions before we start. Uh, we have Jens, uh, Tony, Antal, and Kamal. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves and introduce the accelerators they run. Jens, starting with you. Yeah, my name is... is this I think we need a mic. We right? don't know which one is working. <laughs> Let's make it more fun. Yeah, or we can just cast I think we, we can use the mic, yeah. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jens. I'm the head of the ProSiebenZ1 Accelerator. ProSiebenZ1 is one of the largest media groups in Europe, mainly focusing on TV businesses, but also a huge digital uh, business unit. And we have a three months accelerator program. It runs twice a year. We've had 27 companies so far in our portfolio. A lot of them received uh, great follow on fundings. So, uh, a bit of advertising for us if you're interested in applying. Speak to me afterwards and I can give you my business card. Hi, I'm Tony from uh, Traction Tribe, uh, the best accelerator from Europe that you've never heard of uh, for the reason it's um, we're very new. We started six months ago. Um, we have 11 portfolio companies and we focus on actually gaining traction and, and pushing those teams uh, to the U.S. as quickly as possible. Hi, I'm uh, Kamal Hassan. I'm from I360 Accelerator, and uh, we are um, a tech accelerator based in Dubai. However, we also enable other accelerators. We run uh, Turnate Accelerator, and we run Ebtikari Accelerator in uh, Abu Dhabi as well. Before we start, uh, I just want to get a quick idea. How many startups or entrepreneurs or developers we have in the room? Just by the raise of hands. Great. So we want to start mainly by getting an understanding, like the very basic question of, you know, what is an accelerator or the evolution of accelerators and how they differ from incubators, VCs, other types of models within the ecosystem. Uh, so I want to start uh, with you, Kamal. Maybe you can give us a little bit better idea of accelerators, how they started in the US and then expanded globally. Also, there's a lot of talk about accelerator bubble, all that. Right. What do you think? Um, going back to the uh, first question, how they differ, um, incubators are typically uh, a deal flow for accelerators, or it could be the opposite as well. Um, the uh, other way is VCs are pick up, pick up uh, they pick uh, uh, startup from accelerators, so another deal flow um, uh, pipeline for VCs. So accelerators are kind of replacing the uh, friends and family uh, rounds that typically uh, um, happens where people want to start their, uh, accelerate, uh, start their projects and they go to their dad or their friends or their family, but now they can go to accelerators who will have much more, much more structure, mentorship, um, uh, business development, technical support, and uh, funding as well. Um, so I think it's a great model, in my opinion. It's one of, even if, there, if it is a bubble, it's okay. Um, that it's a good thing to have. I think we need more and more, especially around this part of the world. Um, we need more and more accelerators that are generalist as well as specialist. Uh, I think that's where the trends might move into, more specialist accelerator. But being in the Middle East and being in the GCC, I think we need more and more of accelerators to give, to, to um, activate or to cultivate the ecosystem of startups and around us as well. Okay. Uh, Tony, what do, you, what do you provide to your startups? As what is the most valuable asset that you have and that you provide to your startup? Is it the network? Is it the space? Is it the mentorship? What, what is it? What is the biggest thing? It's, it's clearly the mentorship. So I, I think the money part is not, not the issue. 
uh, there is money around. I mean, uh, um, in Hungary, there is half a billion dollars poured into 70% into, um, e uh, European Union program and 30% private money. So there's half a billion dollars in the system in, in VC hands. Um, there is a huge black hole in, in space of the accelerator. So um, it's not the money issue, it's the knowledge. And we need a very intense exchange of brains. And actually, and, I mean, we, we are ex actually exporting people to the, to the US, but we actually have to bring in brains. You know? So everyone who, who, who is a mentor, I mean, I think it was Dave this morning, everyone who is successful has to be a mentor and please do come to Dubai or to Budapest or to, or to Germany. So please come to us and, and tell us how to do this. Do you think we have more mentors or more startups? Uh, we need more mentors. We need more startups anyway. So um, if we define startup in, in a general sense. And how, how would you, for example, know which startup, what, what mentor they need? So where is the mentorship, different mentorship levels, different areas of mentorship? Do you customize them or is it just like... I mean, we work very closely um, with, with our teams. It's, it's very tailor-made. So we know what, what sort of, well, no. I mean, you sort of know. We ha hope to know what, what they're missing. Uh, is, it, is it the digital marketing strategy or do they have problems in, 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 in growing the company? You know, in what ways? And then we try to connect with those people who, uh, who understand that particular problem or in, they are in the space that, you know, I mean, it's sort of matchmaking, and we're matchmakers, right? In That's a way. Uh, Jens, uh, one question that uh, we spoke about earlier I want to bring up is, what is the difference, or what's better as, as a model, a accelerator that's backed or started by a corporation or a government or a, you know, an accelerator that's started by an ex-entrepreneur or an ex-startup founder? Uh, which model is better? Does it matter? When does it matter? I think most importantly, um, the startups have to take a look at what are the people that they will be working with. And irrespective of whether it's run by a private organization, a big corporate, or a government, as long as the mentors and the guys that run the program are great, well, why not give it a shot? Um, at the same time, I believe that uh, government or corporate accelerators have a slight advantage over the other is simply because of the funding situation. So we, I mean, I, I run a corporate accelerator, I don't really have to worry about fundraising because I know I have the money that has been committed by, um, by the corporate and if you are a private, privately run accelerator then you constantly have to think about raising money as well, which can be easy but it can also be hard. And if uh, the management team of the accelerator has to focus on that a lot of, uh, a lot of the time, then it might have uh, a harder time mentoring the startups. But irrespective of who, who finances the accelerator, I think accelerators are a great model for startups because they, at least most of them, are very fair. And therefore, I, if, if I were to run a startup or uh, start my own business again, I would definitely apply for accelerator programs. Do you think the accelerator itself that you're running is a startup by itself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is, this is why I chose to, to do it, because you're combining the best of both worlds. I'm uh, starting a company, the accelerator, and helping other startups, and being a mentor is, is just a great thing to do. That's great. Now, this, this takes us to another, uh, I think, interesting question, which is, you know, as an accelerator itself, what's the business model? What's a, the ROI? Uh, what other ROIs do you have besides, you know, the return on equity from startups that you invest in or you take equity in? What are the ties with, when it comes to government or corporate? Why, why is the government interested in, you know, funding or setting up an accelerator? Why is the corporation interested in that? What value do they bring to the table and what do they benefit? Um, I mean, for, for us, it's, it's, of course, it's the return on, on investment. In the end, it's, it's cash, but that's a long-term long game. It's, it takes a couple of years until you get the first equity proceeds. Um, and in addition, is of course, it's a PR value. Um, you know, you position yourself as part of the ecosystem, supporting startups. You have great access to early innovation. You can buy products early on, you know, use the services the startups offer and get in touch with a lot of great talent and that inspires your organization, your accelerator. So that's definitely, in, in addition to the financial return, it's, it's, it's a great thing. 
Kamal, also you've been uh, through Turn 8, uh, you've worked with DP World in Dubai and to start Turn 8 and working with the government on that part. Uh, what was the experience? How much value did it add to the accelerator itself having this backup from DP World and how did it okay. add value to um, them? As I mentioned, we run uh, three different accelerators. One is a private uh, accelerator, one is a corporate accelerator, which is DP World uh, Accelerator, one is a government accelerator uh, run on behalf of the government of Abu Dhabi. Um, each one of them is completely different. Each has different objectives. Each one of them is uh, have a, a different mandate as well. But the process is the same because we enable all of them um, in, in the different ways. Uh, for example, in the Abu Dhabi Accelerator, we're heavily focused on tech uh, startup, mainly for Emiratis, for local Emiratis, because that's the mandate the government wants to do. In our private accelerator, our goal, uh, our revenue model, let's put it this way, it c doesn't come from the accelerator itself, because we, ha we complemented it with uh, an incubator and a fund as well, and a consultancy as well. So the, the, the accelerator itself doesn't make uh, short-term revenues uh, uh, versus uh, uh, capitalizing on the equity long-term. Um, the DP World Accelerator is an interesting one because uh, if some of you who knows what DP World is, is one of these second largest port authority in the world, or port uh, operator, I'm sorry. Uh, very boring build, uh, business. It's not like Telefonica or, to, or like T-Mobile or one of these fancy telecom companies. It's a very boring business, but they've realized uh, quickly that they're going to be disrupted by technology. And one of their uh, innovation strategy is to set up, uh, a, a, you know, uh, an accelerator outside their corporate, head, uh, outside their corporate boundaries and to find technologies that at one point might help them uh, continue their business and grow and uh, move into more technology-based uh, company rather than the basic, uh, um, uh, the, the traditional business model. So corporate accelerators are very interesting um, uh, because they can lead to um, some sort of return uh, quickly because they can identify opportunity like we saw the Telefonica Accelerator, they kind of identify opportunities that they can take on some of these startups. And that's what we're seeing with uh, Turn8. Okay. Uh, until one of your main uh, part of the business model is this connection with Silicon Valley and with the US, you also have offices in the US. Do you think an accelerator or your accelerator becomes more successful by having this association with, with the Valley and, and with US? accelerator startups over there and, and how do you make it work? Um, I mean there's a saying that every five miles that you uh, go to the east from from the valley the knowledge halves <laughs> so, so you have to you really have to be connected um, and really we have to move a lot around so I, I think that the, the, the very fact that we're here and we, you there and we here every, uh, together. I mean, this is very, very vital. We have to exchange. That's, that's very important. So um, it's interesting in terms of market size. What I learned here that, like Turkey or um, other, other big countries, um, you have a very different story from Hungary. I, you know, we, um, in in Eastern Europe, like, like Estonia or or even Hungary, 10 million people. I mean, you know from the start, if you are in a real startup and not, not in a lifestyle business, you know from the start that you have to go uh, abroad, even maybe in Germany. Germany is a huge market, but a conservative one, so you tell me how it is, I'm very interested. But yes. uh, we sort of know, we sort of believe that we have to go to, the, to, to, um, to markets that are sort of, um, you know, eager, to, eager for, for change. Um, but here it's very different. And and I, I was just sitting next to someone, you know, from from Iran, and, and they have a you know a PayPal uh, kind of thing going on there. It's it's so interesting. Your local market is 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 interesting. So so the answer varies from from location to location, probably where where you st where you start first. And, and then what's your advantage as a local accelerator versus you know U.S. accelerators, and how does it differ? I mean, you know, in a small country like Hungary, we we are visible, so we know everyone. 
and everyone knows us kind of thing, right? So, so it's a small ecosystem. So um, obviously our first um, teams came from, from, from people we know and people uh, uh, who know us. So, so it's pretty much uh, the, the 500 startups uh, model that, that we sort of, uh, we collect, you know, we, we have our de deal flow from, from people we know. Uh, Jens, which startups do you think should go on an accelerated program and which ones shouldn't? Um, the ones that are in doubt and the ones that don't like accelerator programs per se, they shouldn't attend because then they won't be happy. Um, there are a lot of startups that approach me and say, hey, um, you know, I mean, the, the typical question a startup uh, asks is, I, I am under the impression that we are already too far ahead, too advanced for uh, applying to an accelerator program. And I said, you know, if this is how you feel, you're probably right because you won't be happy in the end but at the same time we explain to them that most often they're wrong because um, everybody of course believes that simply by having an idea and simply by st having started a business the company is already worth millions of euros but really put yourself in an investor's shoes and think would someone really pay that much money for buying that idea is it really that valuable and most likely the answer is no and, but we can help you get to that point where it is a real successful business model. And therefore, I believe it's, um, and as, as you mentioned earlier, it's n not about the money because everything is, uh, is around the valuation in the end. You, I mean, in our program, you get 25,000 euros um, plus mentoring, plus office space, and so on and so forth. And we take 5% equity in the company. So a lot of the startups say, okay, I get 25,000 euros and I give you 5% equity, that puts us as a valuation of half a million, is that, and, and then I say, that's actually the wrong way of thinking about it because then you won't be happy in the end. What you have to, what you have to really understand is that you give us 5% in equity for the time we spend with you, for putting you in touch with the right people, for coaching you, for you know, introducing you to venture capitalists, for making sure you get your follow-on funding and so on and so forth and that is value uh, value way more than the 5% that you give to us. And in addition, on top of it, you get 25,000 euros for you to come to Berlin or Munich, get an apartment there, buy your food, cover your travel expenses, and invest it a bit in your company. And that's how you have to think about it. Because otherwise, you always feel like you've basically given away too much, gotten too, 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 too less, and therefore uh, it's very important that you really are open uh, to the coaching part of it. Do you usually allow, you said before that it's important for entrepreneurs or startups to kind of see who they're going to be working with and if they're comfortable doing that. Do you allow that kind of, you know, time for the startups to get to know you on a personal level and know you, like who they're working with before they apply or they start or they make their decision? Yeah, I mean, that's actually very, a uh, very good question because I always embrace if someone's really keen on exploring what it's like working with us and if someone was interested and said hey I want to step by and take a look at who, who I would be working with can I meet with you uh, I, I, I always say yes but very few pe people do that actually but a lot of startups however they contact our uh, alumni companies and that's a very smart way of doing it I mean all of our companies or the companies we've invested in are are, are on our website and then they approach them and say, hey, uh, what was it like? And that's probably the best you can do because then you get first-hand experience and most likely uh, you get a fairly realistic picture and that's, that's uh, in, in particular, it's possible if the accelerator has been around for, for a while and there are a lot of companies in the, in the batches, it's only complicated for the, first, for the first batch, basically. Can we get a questions from the audience uh, before we reach the end? Anyone has a question? Graduates in the room. All right. There's one right over there. Oh. Anyone that graduated from the accelerator? No one except for. <laughs> no, we are having an accelerator in Iran. So <laughs> the question uh, is that uh, you guys have been around, especially I360, because I'm following up uh, what the great job you guys are doing there. But can you specifically tell about like the, the success of stories that has been built? Uh, I'm really concerned about the success rate of regional accelerators. Thanks. Um, uh, great question. It's too early to talk about success stories. If, if you follow the YCOM uh, history, they haven't talked about success stories in the traditional way of exits and all of that until, uh, maybe until Dropbox, I think. Uh, 
because it takes a long time uh, for things like that. But if we measure uh, short-term success stories, we typically measure it by uh, startup going to demo days. Uh, that's a great success stories. We have, uh, we are in the fourth round and we had uh, about 30, uh, 33 startups uh, going, uh, I mean in portfolio plus nine in the Abu Dhabi one. Um, they all, not all of them actually, about 80% went to demo day. And then the other metrics is uh, fundraising. So uh, we have uh, almost 50% of them actually fundraised as well. Um, so if that's, for us, that's considered good success stories. We haven't seen uh, exits yet uh, because we've been around only for two years, less than two years. But I wanted to touch base on a very important thing that you uh, mentioned about. Um, we are setting up uh, a pavilion in the Silicon Valley. Uh, basically, the, uh, our accelerator will have an office in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we have three startups already went to the Silicon Valley. Uh, and the reason we set up that, not for all our startups, but for selected ones, is because we believe they have greater potential for acquisitions, for exit, and for business development uh, on the long run to be in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we suffer in the Middle East from you know, exit uh, um, models or exit potential in many ways. And so, um, so that's one of the reasons we set up in the Silicon Valley as well. Um, I, I'm very, I'm, I'm absolutely agree, you have to be there. I mean, um, what we do here, um, we sort of buy cheap and sell high, right? So, um, but for, for be, to be able to sell high, you have to be there. Um, the, the words they, uh, they used when, when, when we were talking to um, American VCs, they, they're saying, um, you know, teams from everywhere from the world, they need uh, a, brain, a brainwash when, when they arrive in, 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 uh, in America, and also um, they shit test you. They shit test you if, if you sort of up to their standards. Can you make it on time? for instance, uh, things like that, you know, and, 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 you know, teams coming from a very different culture where, where the, the, the perception of time, there are, you know, there's huge literature, literature about the, the, the perception of time is different in, in dif between cultures. You have to, I mean, we have to, I mean, I, I come from, you know, East, Eastern Europe where time is sort of a bit sloppy, a sloppier uh, concept than, than in the US. We have to, to know that, you know, well, I, I often say the exit you're looking for is not the, the, uh, the selling your company. You're looking for the exit at the airport. You know, most, m most teams, because you have to learn how, how the states work. You have to, you know, literally understand how that word works. And, then, and for that, we have, we have a place in, from all places in Vegas, where, because you can, you can work cheaply from there, in, the, in like Las Vegas, because, because you, um, you can learn uh, the knots and boards of the country cheaply. Uh, you know, we rent a house, and, and the funny thing is that the, the teams that work there together... Startups would like that, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing is, they, you know, they, they, they do work a lot, and, and the funny thing is when, when they don't work, they, they help each other. So, so it's actually good to be in, in the middle of the desert you know, with nothing to do. So off, off you go. Jens, your opinion on that? On, this on Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> um, on success stories or successes? Success stories and the uh, Silicon Valley bridge. The Silicon Valley is, imp I mean, for us it's slightly different because, um, I mean, we do have an office in Silicon Valley as well and uh, it's important to have some kind of, you know, connection to the Silicon Valley, but the German-speaking region is 100 million strong, so therefore, uh, you know, you can do business there as well. And I mean, starting there and, you know, expanding into Europe is a very viable business model. We've had one company now that did a very successful Indiegogo campaign. They do mobile uh, robotic toy sets for children. And uh, a lot of people from South Korea were interested. And now all of a sudden they are expanding into South Korea. And that's a market we would have never had addressed had they not approached us. So, I mean, it's a lot of it is chance, a lot of it is coincidence, you just have to be ready for it. And therefore, and that's the key thing that I would, that I always tell my startups, is, I mean, they have to move faster. The startups are just extremely slow. And I mean, just, you know, 
kicking them in the butt every day is uh, is important because I mean speed matters a lot. Is, is, sorry. Is, you don't mind. Um, I just wanted to mention something about the difference between accelerators here and in the U.S. Actually, the difference between the U.S. market in general and the rest of the world. Uh, in the in the U.S., when a, a startup puts a, their app online, they don't have to go create demand. The demand exists, and people download and uses. And um, one of the things we suffer from in the rest of the world, including Europe, is that we have to create demand for the startups in order to for them to actually survive and sell and and do business development. There are three types of demands. Uh, one is uh, government-based demand, so government procurement. So uh, as accelerators, we work with government to improve their procurement processes so they can buy from, from startups. The second thing, corporate procurement as well. Corporates are very poor in dealing with startups. We work and lobby the corporates to actually be better in dealing and working with startup buying from them. The most difficult one is the, the consumer procurement or the consumer's demand um, because behaviors, there's a lot of uh, be, uh, attitude around um, us here is that if it's not made in the U.S., I, I don't buy it uh, as well. That's even a consumer problem. So this is the big difference between accelerators outside the U.S. and accelerators in a, The accelerator mean? outside, they produce startups. They don't have to create demand for them. They, they put them out and, and the demand is there. Economy and adoption, uh, basically, economy. yeah. I wanted to ask you one question. Do you think Berlin is, an, is a big destination right now for startups? Um, it certainly is. I mean, uh, our main office, however, is in Munich um, because there's Oktoberfest right now. and. Um, no, but we have, a, we have an office in Berlin as well. Berlin is definitely a place to be um, because of uh, the availability of talent. I mean, there are graphics designers, there are programmers, there's just people there. And the cost as well. And the well. cost is, is, is relatively low, that's true. At the same time, it doesn't matter that much because we, I mean, when we take a look at the applications we get from, the, from uh, startups, we've received applications from 32 uh, countries this year. Uh, for the for for the um, for this batch, and I mean, from countries that you haven't really thought about before, and I mean the the ideas are great. It's I mean it doesn't really matter. I mean this these days with the availability of technology all over the world, you can start uh, your company from almost anywhere, and then once it grows and once you are you know at a stage where you need to find more employees and so on and more and need more capital, it's definitely important to move to you know, the US or maybe to Berlin or maybe to London or whatever to, you know, be closer to, to the uh, location, industry. Location, location, location. Yeah. Okay, I, th I think we're almost running out of time here. I want to thank the panelists and thank you for your time. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>